During the first century, many of those who have seen and heard Christ began to pass away. In fear of losing the memory of Jesus, the apostles began writing what Justin the Martyr calls the Memoirs of the Apostles. These came later to be known as the four accounts of the Gospel, known to us as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The last of those accounts might have been written with the dawn of the second century. As the disciples would preach the Gospel and then move to the next country they are about to preach in, they would send letters to reach out to those who have already believed, confirming them in the faith and advising them to walk worthy of the calling by which they were called. These letters were immediately seen as authoritative by those who received them. However, no one would see them as a canon of scripture until the end of the second century and the beginning of the third century when we would see the first list of books of the New Testament. Other edifying writings were composed, such as the Shepherd of Hermas. Local churches had different ideas of what books were authoritative and what books were not. For example, the second epistle of Peter, James and Jude, were seen by some as authoritative while others saw them as simply letters or even disputed letters. The major seas of Christianity begin forming throughout the first century. Eusebius and Irenaeus of Lyon gives us a record of how Peter and Paul together established the Church of Rome, which emerged as a number of bishoprics that came later to be united under one bishop. With the preaching of Mark, considered a disciple of Peter by Irenaeus, the Church of Alexandria was established. Mark would write a gospel around the year 60 AD and compose a liturgy which was later edited by the Alexandrian Pillar of Faith, Cyril of Alexandria, in the 5th century. Paul and Andrew would preach in Greece and what would later become the Church of Constantinople. It is believed that one of the churches there was presided over by Onesimus. The slave Paul freed through his plead with his master Philemon in a letter which would later become part of the New Testament. Antioch, as mentioned earlier, had Peter, Paul, and Barnabas play a role in its establishment. The Church of Antioch would bring forth a bishop named Ignatius of Antioch who would compose a number of letters that would tell us plenty about the ecclesial life in the second century of Christianity. 